What's up guys, Matt Tolvers. Today we're gonna to review this Vitoman Jump 1500. This is their biggest power station with 1548 watt hours of capacity and it has a 1500 watt inverter able to run continuously up to 1500 watts. It has a 3000 watt surge. So if you have appliances that you know pull a lot of power to get started and then it jumps back down to something under 1500, this can handle it. Um, so I'm gonna show you it up close and personal, let you see what's going on with it and then I'll plug in some things that pull a lot of power and we'll see what it can run with. All right guys, here it is. The Vito Man Jump 1500. So this thing, as you can see, is at 100% capacity with zero watts being pulled currently. This thing has two USB-C ports. These are both 100 watt uh, ports. So that's basically as fast as I've ever seen. Sometimes they're 60 watts. Um, it has four regular USB plugs. One of them is a quick charge and you can turn it on by just pressing the USB button. And then you can see it shows a USB or the type C and the USBs are on. So these ones are currently on. So if I plugged in anything to this, it would get power. But if I plugged in something to any of these, it would not because these ones are not on currently. So over here, we can turn on the DC. So now DC is on. And this is for like your cigarette lighter, anything that plug into your uh, car cigarette lighter, the 12 volt. And you got two uh, 12 volt 10 amp DC plugs right here. And then over here, we can turn AC on. So now everything's on currently. The fans kick on for a second when you turn AC on and then they go back off. Anytime you're not using AC, obviously you're gonna wanna turn it off so you don't drain your battery. So it has three AC outlets. They all have a ground plug in them, which is really nice because with something this big, you're gonna probably have a lot of them with uh, ground plugs. And I like the fact that these are spaced out quite a bit. Sometimes they're really close together and it's like hard to plug a ne uh, plug next to another one. I've had to experience that with some other power stations. It does have this jumper cable spot, which is like a feature that I don't think I've seen on any other power station. So so what you do, you take this provided jumper cables. It's not a very long cord. It's probably like, uh, the cord's probably about a foot long. So you have to get it really close to whatever you're jumping. But basically you just plug this thing right in here. All you do is just carry this over to your vehicle and you put this on the positive and the negative and this will automatically power your vehicle and you should be able to start it. And if you can't, there's a little boost button on here you just press the boost button and it'll surge even more power to really start your vehicle. And to know you're correct, there's a correct light on here, like a green light for correct, or else if you have it backwards, it'll show a red light. So it won't even work if, if you don't have it connected correctly. This other little flap here is like a battery symbol. This is if you want to double the capacity. So instead of just 1,548 watt hours, say you're going on a longer trip or whatever, you can buy their extra spare battery to double the capacity to 3,096 watt hours. And it's actually quite a bit cheaper because it doesn't have all the buttons and fancy stuff on it. It literally is just a battery. It looks kind of the same without all of this on it. And it comes with the cord to plug into this. So automatically you're able to have twice as much capacity. It does come with this like carrying case for your uh, jumper cables. And this is like your plug-in to plug into your car to charge it. It also has like a little manual in there. And then I think this is just kind of like a friendly safety tips or whatever. Has a little pouch right here. We can store some stuff. Here's the power brick, uh, nothing fancy, but just a nice uh, black power brick. There's the plug you plug into right here. And obviously this is where you plug into your wall. It's the back of it. It's got a nice little light on it. You just press a little button. There's low, medium, high, and that's your strobe. And that's SOS and then off. And it does have a nice fan spot on both sides to obviously cool it if it gets too hot. The other thing I really like about this is it does have those new lithium iron phosphate batteries. So they're way safer. It's a newer technology than those lithium ion batteries. I actually watched the video like two days ago where a lithium ion battery from like the back of like a little portable refrigerator, like a camping refrigerator, like started blowing up. They barely got it out of the truck in time or the truck probably would have burned down. And it was like shooting off like fireworks. It could have burned down the forest. They were trying to stomp it out. It's making crazy sounds like fireworks going off or gunshots going off, extremely scary. So these new lithium iron phosphate batteries are much safer. This thing has like five different mechanisms to keep itself from uh, having any kind of issues. Like if it gets too hot, the fans start kicking on obviously. If it gets even hotter than that, it'll shut off. Or if it's really, really cold below a certain temp, it'll also shut off. Also it has like a safety feature for like overcharge and discharge. The other really good thing besides safety reasons to get the lithium iron phosphate batteries is because they last a lot longer. This thing does weigh 38 and a half pounds. So this is not something you're gonna to wanna to be taking around like backpack camping. It's definitely something either you're gonna use like for vehicle camping or 
maybe if you are tent camping like super close to your vehicle or in your backyard or something but it's also obviously really good for like power outages or stuff like that but yeah 38 and a half pounds is definitely not something i recommend uh strapping to your back and walking three and a half miles into the woods with it does have like a high quality nice hard plastic i'm not sure what the name of that kind of plastic is but uh the handle feels very sturdy it has a nice little spot to like rest your phone on there this is where you charge it with either ac wall outlet uh your car charger or else your solar panels this is able to handle 200 watts of solar input so either you can buy the veto man 100 watts you can plug two into here to have full 200 watts charging or else you could buy like blue eddie's 200 watt uh, solar panel and you could plug one into here um, to get the max up to 200 watts of solar charging so with the ac wall outlet you just plug it into one of these it doesn't matter which one and from my experience, it usually charges about 165 watts an hour, which takes you about nine hours to fully charge this if this is completely dead. But I think it says to 80%, it takes about five hours based on their website. Same thing with a cigarette lighter. Uh, you just plug it into here and obviously it's gonna take longer, but you'd mainly just wanna do that if like you're on a road trip or something like that, or you're driving from place to place. And you're just like, I just wanna charge it up a little bit more, kind of top it off. That would be a good time to use something like this. So if you were actually on a really perfect sunny day getting 200 watts of solar then it would charge in probably like eight hours but obviously it's never perfect at getting exactly 200 watts so you're probably looking at more like 10 hours even on a pretty sunny day it does come with these veto man stickers i peeled one off and i put it on there but uh, you could put a different one on there or you could just leave it off this is the box that came in uh still in like perfect condition because they actually put it inside another box that was like really tight on here then you can see that was protecting the top and then it had it was inside that bag and then it had another big foam piece on the outside brought a few things that pull a lot of power a lot more than your regular like led lights or you're just charging your drones or cameras or whatever your laptop Got some coffee in the middle of the woods. We're still at 97%. It was pulling over 1200 watts. While I have my coffee, let's try out a couple other things that pull quite a bit of power. Let's try this big blender. Looks like it's pulling about 330 watts. No issue for the Vito man. As you can see, we got a shop fan. I think this pulls about 80 watts an hour. It's been a while since I've used it, but this should last you all night. Uh, I didn't want to show something like this because I think it's a good idea for those that can't afford one of those uh, portable ACs that pull a lot of power, but still want to be able to stay kind of cool in your vehicle if you're doing some van camping or maybe even tent camping. So let's turn this thing on and see how many watts it pulls. There's a low. Low is about 80 watts. About 85 watts of medium. About 95 watts on high. So let's just round this up and say it runs 100 watts on high. Uh, with 1,548 watt hours, that should run you about 15 hours. So uh, well through the whole night. So here's a big electric grill. Let's turn this thing up to high, 400 Fahrenheit, and see how many watts it pulls. Looks like about 1,280 watts when this thing's on high. So uh, at that rate, it'd probably last you like an hour and 20 minutes if you ran this the whole time on high. Obviously, once it gets to temp, it shouldn't pull that many watts. So it's not like it's gonna pull that the whole time. This is my wife's electric blanket. So we'll turn it on high, see how much power this pulls. So it's pulling about 110 watts on high. So like at night after you turn off your Mr. Buddy heater, because you don't want propane in the vehicle, you can turn something like this on, it'd probably stay pretty warm in your vehicle. So, so far we're still at 95% even after these tests and making that coffee. This is gonna be the one that pulls the most power, a double toaster. 
So we'll do one at a time. So we're at about 750 watts. Now turn the other one on. This is gonna really push this thing. Five, 1519, 25. I don't know if it's gonna keep running this because this is technically above the continuous amount of power. We're still over 1500 watt. I wanna restart this with some toast in there. So we're pulling about 1,520, 25 watts right now. So we're actually above what this is supposed to continuously do, but it does have a 3,000 watt surge. So let's see if it'll handle it. Well, it made double toast at the same time. That pulled 1,500, like 20-ish watts the whole time and uh, had no issues the fans do kick on the whole time to keep the temp down for safety reasons obviously and uh to last longer but it made our toast with no issues most power stations cannot handle this much power got some nice toast in the middle of the woods they're not uh overcooked they're just about perfect well now i have my zero breeze mark ii ac which is really good for vehicle camping plug into the veto man turn this bad boy mm -hmm. on and turn it on the highest speed and the highest temp takes a little bit to kick in and we'll see uh, how she does. See she's ramping up, sound to 57 Fahrenheit. Pulling 77 watts. Let's even turn the light on on this thing. So let's get this thing uh, pulling as much power as we can. Look guys, we're up to about 107 watts. No problem for the Vito Man. I will tell you, this pulls at max speed on a super hot, humid day. The max this will pull is 240 watts. So, so long story short, you take 1548 and you divide it by 240, which I think will give you over six hours. So. And then if you want this thing to be on high all night, you can obviously buy the extra battery and then you'll have this last all night on high with no issues. Well guys, after all that testing, we're still at about 88%. Uh, it's pulling three watts because I have the A sleep button still on. Now it'll turn off, zero more watts. So all you have to do is just press these buttons to turn it on. There's no actual power on and off button you have to hold down, which I actually really like. Well guys, sun's getting a little bit lower. Uh, just finishing up my coffee in the middle of the woods here. Mosquitoes are starting to come out because I'm in the shade. So uh, final thoughts on this Beetle Man Jump 1500. I actually really like it. Uh, you get a lot of power for a very good price, especially when you factor in the fact it has those lithium iron phosphate batteries which are safer and longer lasting if you wanted to you can buy their other battery pack which is actually quite a bit cheaper to double the power and say the times you don't want to use that extra power you don't have all that extra weight which is nice so it's like hey this time i only got on a one day trip so i only need the one next one maybe you're going on a two three four day trip so you bring the extra battery power if you're just running like led lights and charging your drones and stuff like that uh, the solar panels that plug into this should be fine now if you want something that's going to be like off grid you want a ton of solar panels and you want tons of input power from the sun this is not the power station to go with other than that i really like it and if you guys are into like van camping and just camping in general then maybe check out my tolvers camping channel i'll have a link in the description this is my brand new review channel so if you uh, want to see more reviews of higher quality products that i think are worth your time subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace